class has officially begun, you can learn the basics of editing in a short time. Week one, what does a copy editor do? This week you will learn where copy editing fits into the editorial process, what a copy editor does and doesn't do, and the tools of the trade, looking at how copy editing fits into the editorial process. So let's lay out the tasks that copy editors need to complete. Any questions on what we just covered? Your assignment, week one packet. Welcome to week two, Mastering Technology. I wanted to spend a little time going over the homework. Let's get started on our lecture. You will learn the basics about Microsoft Word, including track changes. You'll learn type coding and styles, and you'll learn about tools, add-ins, and other shortcuts. Word is the editing software you should become familiar with. So it's very easy to ignore backups, but you really shouldn't. Find and find and replace are so useful, I think they make you a better editor. I forced myself to learn it, and now I'm like, oh my God, how did I get by without it? Here we are at week three, the elements of style and style. This week, you will learn how editorial style differs from literary style, the hierarchy of style authority, and what a style sheet is, how to make one, and why it's important. And if you haven't already picked up on it, there's more than one type of style, editorial style and literary style. So let's do a little practice. Can anyone tell me the three style authorities to use when you're copy editing a trade book? By now you should have a clear idea of what style sheets are. Week four, into the weeds we go. So you will learn this week what and how to fact check, common continuity errors and how to handle them, and the skinny on permissions and copyright. What is fact checking? The Macmillan and Penguin Random House books I edit always require fact checking. What are continuity errors? They're details that don't match or don't ring true. What needs permission? Anything that is or might be copyrighted. Keep in mind the three basic rules. Here we are, week five. Editorial judgment and querying. This week you will learn what we mean by editorial judgment, what to query, and how to query. Copy editing does not mean following the rules blindly. The copy editor serves four entities. For example, if you replace an unclear pronoun with a name, you're serving the reader. But the work you do as a copy editor can also affect art. So how do you develop editorial judgment? There's six types of queries. Please try to always be respectful and tactful and patient, no matter how annoyed you are. And you will get annoyed. <laughs> so here we are, week six, insider tips for the happy copy editor. This week, you will learn how you can find work, how much money you can make, and how to freelance successfully. The first step I advise is to create a website. Next, you wanna find ways to get experience in editing. So you can meet authors and other editors online, especially social media. Getting paid. This is the fun part, you guys. It sounds ridiculous, but you can get injured as an editor. Take the extra time to set up your workstation. Time management can be a challenge. It's a challenge for me, even after all these years. Don't be so worried about the money that you never get anywhere, that you never freelance. So that is it for copy editing principles and mechanics. Thank you for being a wonderful class and good luck.